What's up, everybody? Welcome to a new English vid. I'm Katya. In today's lesson, we're going to look at 15 false friends. If you are a Spanish speaker, these words might confuse you. It's the third edition of false friends so far on this channel. I hope you like it and find it useful. Are you ready? If so, let's kick off. Before we start, just to remind you that false friends are English words that look very similar to words in Spanish, but have a different meaning. So my first false friend today is for good. For good. In English, it doesn't mean para bien or para mejor, but it means forever. Para siempre. If you want to say para mejor, it would be for the better. An example sentence, he left the company for good, which means he left the company forever. Now let's move on to our second false friend, which is reassure. Reassure. In English, it doesn't mean reassurar, but it means to comfort someone and stop them from worrying. In Spanish, it's tranquilizar. And if you want to say reasegurar in English, it would be to reinsure. An example sentence, he smiled, reassured me. Number three, we've got another verb to elaborate. To elaborate. In English, it doesn't mean elaborar, but it means to add more information and to give more details. In Spanish, it's explicar mejor. And if you want to say elaborar in English, it could be to make, to produce, or to manufacture. For example, could you elaborate on your plan? Now we're going to look at some adjectives. Number four, seasoned. Seasoned. Be very careful because in English it doesn't mean de temporada. It has two different meanings. The first one is to describe a person who has a lot of experience of a particular activity and it must be followed by a noun. In Spanish is una persona experimentada o con experiencia. And the second meaning is food with salt, pepper and other spices added to it. In Spanish it's sazonado o condimentado. And if you want to say de temporada in English, it would be seasonal. And now two examples. The first one, she's a seasoned traveler which means that she has traveled a lot. And another example, the dish is highly seasoned. Let's move on to our adjective number five, which is stupendous. Stupendous. In English, it doesn't mean estupendo, but it means extremely large or impressive, especially greater or better than you expect. In Spanish, it's tremendo o formidable. And if you want to say estupendo in English, it would be great. An example sentence, the queen's gambit is a stupendous success. Guys, if you haven't seen this series, I highly recommend it. I loved it. Okay, let's move on to our adjective number six, which is well-educated. Well-educated. In English, it doesn't mean bien educado, but it's a person who has a lot of knowledge and has studied at university or college. In Spanish, it's una persona con estudios. And if you want to say bien educado, it would be well-mannered. An example sentence, he comes from a well-educated family. 
Now let's move on to some nouns. Number seven, blister. Blister. In English, it doesn't mean this blister, but it means a swelling on the surface of the skin filled with liquid. In Spanish, ampolla. And in English, this blister could be a pill pack or a sleeve of pills. An example sentence, I had blisters on my feet when I was training for the marathon. Number eight, brackets. Brackets. In English, it doesn't mean brackets, those things I'm wearing right now on my teeth, but in English, it means two symbols placed around extra information. In Spanish, corchetes. And if you want to say brackets in English, we would say braces. An example sentence, these words should go in brackets. Number nine, color, American pronunciation, or cola, British. Color or cola. In English, it doesn't mean collar, como este, para adornar el cuello. It means two different things. The first one, it can be the part around the neck of a shirt or jacket. Cuello de camisa o chaqueta. And the second meaning, it can be a strap around the neck of a cat or a dog. Collar para perros o gatos. And if you want to say collar, in English, it's necklace. And now two examples. The first one, I always iron a shirt color. And the second example, the dog isn't wearing a color, which makes it difficult to find its owner. Number 10, commodity. Commodity. Look out, because in English, it doesn't mean comida, but a product that can be traded. In Spanish, mercancía. And if you want to say comida in English, it could be comfort or amenity. An example sentence, water could be the most valuable commodity in the future. And guys, before we continue and look at five more false friends, just a super quick reminder, please make sure you're subscribed to my channel and your notifications are turned on. There is a weekly lesson waiting for you. Thank you. Let's continue with the lesson. Number 11, complexion. Complexion. Be very careful. In English, it doesn't mean complexion. It means the skin on a person's face. In Spanish is teeth o cutis. And if you want to say complexion in English, it would be build. For example, she has a pale complexion. Okay, number 12, compliment. Compliment. In English, it doesn't mean complimento, but a polite remark of praise or admiration. In Spanish is cumplido, halago o piropo. And if you want to say complimento in English, it would be compliment spelled with an E and not an I or accessory. An example sentence, thank you for your compliment, I feel flattered. Number 13, another false friend, predicament. Predicament. In English, it doesn't mean predicamento, but an unpleasant situation that is very difficult to get out of. In Spanish, it would be apuro o aprieto. And if you want to say predicamento in English, it would be prestige. For example, they are in a financial predicament. Two more to go, number 14, super tricky, retribution. Retribution. In English, it doesn't mean retribution, but punishment especially deserved. In Spanish, castigo. And if you want to say retribución in English, it would be payment or reward. 
An example sentence, they won't stop until they get retribution. And last but not least, number 15, signature. Signature. In English, it doesn't mean a signatura, but your name or surname written by yourself. In Spanish, firma. And if you want to say a signatura in English, it's subject. An example sentence, the child forged his mother's signature. So guys, that's it for today. I really hope you enjoyed this different kind of lesson. And if you want to meet more false friends, check out the previous editions right here. And of course, thank you so much for having watched this video up to the very end. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to give it a huge thumbs up, to subscribe to my channel and do my daily quiz on Instagram. With that being said, thanks for watching and see you next week. Ciao for now!